Hello and welcome to yourlocalnote.com. My name is RJ. Mike Stringer also hanging with me. We have another podcast for you. Uh, and we've got uh, Jojo Walsh. We'll be talking with him in just a few minutes, uh, talking about his new album and his music. Uh, that is coming up, like I said, in a few minutes. I just want to remind you, we've got apps, we've got streaming, we've got podcasts, we've got info. It's all here on yourlocalnote.com. And it's all music from Philadelphia and the surrounding area. That's right. No one from the outside this area. If you want the apps, all you have to do is go to the respective stores and type in YLN and you'll get it and you can download it for absolutely nothing. Nada. Free. Check it out. It takes you to our site and you can check out the streaming and also our podcast and all the other good info that we have there. Okay, let's get to Jojo Walsh's first song. It's called Waiting from his a new album. It's called Travels right here on yourlocalnote.com. I've been waiting for The song is called Waiting. The singer is Jojo Walsh, and the album is called Travels. Jojo, welcome to yourlocalnote.com. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you being here. All right, let's uh, let's start with uh, how'd you get into music? What was um, was it an art? Was it a song? Was it uh, uh, different musicians that got you interested in it? Uh, when and when did this happen? Oh, a little background. It's a long time Go ago. Go way um, back for us. My <laughs> mom tells the story that when I was around seven or eight. I heard a recording of Beethoven's Ninth 
the uh, Ode to Joy, and I went wild for it. And really? so ever since then, I guess I was uh, in love with music. Mm-hmm. And so I was always singing my little heart out as a kid. <laughs> and uh, when I got into high school, I didn't really have anything else to do. And so I joined the choir. Okay. And uh, a teacher there recommended a school, and then I went to a music school. And So it's always been music. Yeah, so always been music. Ever since you can remember. Yes. And, and we can thank uh, Beethoven for that, right? Yes. And so th- your mom is very much into classical music? Uh, she's into all kinds of music, but um, she's in, I don't know, I guess it really wasn't what she was into. I just heard it at a, a music store oh, in, okay. in okay. Maryland at some family event we were doing. So. Oh, okay. And, yeah. And, but, and that's just happened that, to be playing on the And speakers. it stuck in your head and then you responded and... Yeah. Evidently, I went wild for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what they tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Let's go back to uh, the song we just heard. It, it's called Waiting. Um, you wrote this song. Yes. Uh, wh- what is this song about? This song is about uh, waiting for someone to love you the way you love them, basically. Ah, okay. So it could be a potentially uh, bad, not a good love song if they never catch up to you. Yeah, it's kind of song, uh, kind of a song about frustration, I guess, with, uh, you know, why can't you just feel the way right, I feel, right. you know? Yeah, okay. I, I've Get had, with it. I've had that once or twice <laughs> in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so are, are you writing that from, you know, personal experiences? Is it fictitious or... You know, just past I would say half and half. From... Okay. Half and half. Um, I mean, most of the album is very personal. Um, so when I was writing it, I was feeling that way, I guess, for the most part, because I was just getting out of a relationship. And so, um, I don't know. I think it. I think it was. It was coming from multiple directions, I guess. Okay. In, in with writing, then, um, do you find yourself? Uh, inspired by different things or is it uh, something that you have to have experienced in order for you to write about it? This album was very much about, um, I would say half of it is about experience and then Mm -hmm. the other half is um, about... um, Telling a story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my, my, uh, I don't know, the way I would imagine feeling about something like even though I haven't experienced it, you know? But just in... Putting myself in my own shoes without having been in those shoes. Okay. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, sure. it, it does Creating make sense. circumstances. Exactly, yeah. And, and then and then imagining how you would react in, in right. that situation. Right. Um, do you find yourself, um, uh, do you find yourself, you know, because you write by yourself, uh, you know, when you have a writer's block, I guess, for a, a lack of better phrase, uh, do you have other people that you can go to in the music industry that you trust and say, hey, I'm working on this and, it's just not coming together, but I like it. But can you can you look at it, or is it just all, or is it all you? No, I never. I I don't think I've ever consulted anyone else with ideas. Um, if I'm in a writer's block, I just you know smack my face 15 times, and then <laughs> you know as time goes by, I uh, something will pop in my head, sure. and I'll think, okay, that's an idea. But yeah, I've never really? I've never really collaborated with anybody. I mean, for anything that I would consider my own, I never collaborated or you know got ideas from people. Just because I like the, you know, the total freedom to it. Okay. And um, if someone gives me an idea, I tend to just think, eh, I, you know, if I didn't think of it, I don't really want it. Not to sound conceited. I just, <laughs> I like things to come from myself. Well, I mean, you know? there's a comfort level with that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and I it's mean, complete it... freedom as opposed to like someone giving me like a narrow thing and I have to go down that road. Well, because you're trying to imagine what they want. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Would you consider yourself um, a fast songwriter, or is it a long process? Both? No, it's it's usually a really quick process. I um I usually start out just um, tickling around with the keys, and then um, once I get an idea, um, I just kind of go with that, and it really happens really quick. I usually write songs within a couple hours. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. When did you first start uh, playing piano or keyboards? When did that begin? Uh, when I was 12, my parents bought me like a rinky-dink Casio, you know, sure. laid up key piano. And I didn't, uh, I don't know, I always got frustrated because I could never play along with whatever the thing wanted me to play along with. So I kind of put it away. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, when I got to college, I had to take piano lessons and stuff. Mm-hmm. I took lessons actually when I was younger, but I didn't practice or anything. So I didn't take it seriously. You just went. <laughs> yeah, and then in college, um, we had to take um, classes for piano, and I didn't really take that serious either. <laughs> but then, like, on the side, when I was, like, if I was supposed to be practicing voice for, like, voice lessons or anything, right. I would find myself practicing maybe 
out of an hour of practice, 10 minutes voice, and then the rest I was just, you know, mm-hmm. okay. you know, doing my own stuff. So, okay, so uh, the keyboards, not as long as singing basically has been since you can remember. Yeah, I, I don't consider myself a pianist whatsoever. It's just, um, you're a singer-songwriter. Yeah, and I'm shocked that I chose piano, you know, almost solely because I, I would never have thought myself even being able to play piano. Mm-hmm. In front of people, but it just seems to have. Have you tried out. other instruments, guitar or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I'm fiddling around with the guitar right now. I can only do like four chords, but uh, I've written like four or five songs off those four chords. Right. Well, there's that's really all you need, some, honestly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of times, yeah. Sometimes you only yeah. need three, you know. Yeah. And, and that's that's good. You got four chords. Yeah. I took eight years of guitar lessons, and I think I can play four nice. chords. You know. Yeah. So <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I'm not very good. <laughs> anyway, let's go on to uh, song number two. All right, yeah, it's uh, Time. What can you tell us about that song? This song is basically about fate and the lack of control we have over it. And um, it's about the incessant flowing of time and not being able to control, you know, 100% of what happens in your path of life. All right, well, we better hurry up and get to the song All right, because time's this podcast running is almost over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're talking with JoJo Walsh here on Your Local Note, and the song is called Time. The song is called Time. He is JoJo Walsh, and this is yourlocalnote.com. Uh, th- all these songs that you're going to hear in this podcast come off his album, Travels. And uh, I'm just interested. You mentioned that your start happened when you heard Beethoven uh, when you were nine years old. Uh, what other influences since then, since that Beethoven song, have uh, made its way into your your head when you're writing these songs. What what are some of your influences? Um, I would say the first person I ever like fell in love with her music was Tracy Chapman, and that mm-hmm. was you know like I think her first CD, I guess like the main one. Right. Um, and I just fell in love with her storytelling and the way she was just so honest, and you could hear, you could just hear what she was feeling. Like it wasn't even you know she wasn't even trying to hide anything. Right. It was so right. honest. Right. And uh, so I would say she was probably my number one, you know, influence, I guess, mm-hmm. for that, you know, for a little bit. I don't I don't really think of her when I'm writing, but um, I don't know. Other influences, I... So when I started writing this album, I was in a, a school for music. So a lot of the stuff that I get, um, I would say, come from classical composers like um, 
you know, Bach and uh, Gustav Mahler and Philip Glass, who was a minimalist. Um, so, yeah, I it's a, it's a really, I guess, a combination of, I don't know, just uh, I don't even know how to answer it, honestly. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff that runs through my head. But I would say classical and, you know, just people that aren't out there just to put a product out and okay. get it done with. Okay. Um, um your your live performances with these with these songs here, um, did you happen to use any feedback from those shows? Did you, your songs evolve as you played them live, um, or were once you wrote them, that's that's what they were, and they haven't really changed much? Yeah, the songs haven't really changed too much. I mean, if I'm just if I'm trying to fill in a little bit, I'll you know. F- you know, just uh, doubt. Oh, what is it? Uh, improv. Improv a little yeah. bit on the stuff, uh, the piano or whatever. But the songs, for the most part, have stayed the same. Um, on some of the songs, there's some added instruments or whatever. But it's always when I perform live, it's just me and the piano. I don't have anyone else that plays with me, so it's pretty much straightforward. Is that something uh, that you want right now, and then maybe change uh, later on to get more people? just for a change in, in the style of your music? Or well, is that... for this album, I wanted it to be, you know, to express itself through simplicity. So I didn't really want to make it That's too... That's the Philip Glass, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't really want it to be too, you know, full or whatever. <laughs> right. You know, when I was recording, the guy who um, recorded was Justin Rand, and I, I told him straight out, I was like, I don't want it to be overproduced, and I don't want there to be all this kind of stuff. But now the stuff that I'm writing... I would say it's completely different in uh, rhythmic rhythms and all that stuff. Um, I would say it's more a beat. I'd like to record with maybe some more um, drums and, you know, more instruments or whatever. But okay. for this album, it was very simple, and I want to keep it that way for these songs. So and that, so you achieved what you wanted to achieve. Uh, yes. Now, in, in producing, did you co-produce this album, or did you trust the producer or tell the producer, this is what I want, and then you were happy with, with uh, the way it turned out? It was a very, um, we were kind of just, you know, it was very, we're like close friends, me and him. Okay. So, so you know it wasn't, him very well. yeah, yeah, I know him very well. And um, so when I don't even really know what co producing would be in the sense, I think we just did it together. I, don't, right. I really don't, you know. Well, because probably, you know, because sometimes <clears throat> bands or, or singers uh, get with a, a producer they've never worked with before. Yeah. And that's, there's a learning process that goes through with that. Yeah. But since you've known him uh, for a long time, it, it's probably without even talking about it, it's co-produced because he knows you very well. He knows what you like and what you don't like. So yeah. the process. Of- we were together the entire process. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was there when he was basically finishing it up mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Um, and I think this is actually his first full CD that he ever did. So oh, okay. it was new to him, too. So, you know, we were just feeding off each other the entire time. It's really cool. <laughs> we did it in his bedroom, and I recorded the vocals in, like, this walk-in closet that right, he had for right. the acoustics or whatever. Cool. Sure. Yeah, so I was singing to uh, fedoras and <laughs> <laughs> hang-up shirts and all that good stuff. <laughs> uh, that, adds a, that adds a different ambiance to the, yeah, the background. Was, yeah, it wasn't too... Uh, nerve-wracking at all but uh, well that that helps because you, you knew the per- you knew the uh, producer mm-hmm. uh and will you use him again uh, when you write another album put together another album or you... yeah the uh we just recorded i would say <clears throat> about um seven piano parts for the songs okay and then he got busy with uh family stuff for the holidays and stuff so we haven't gotten together yet um so yeah i i really do love wor- working with him so i i would like to do more stuff with him okay and he's more experienced too so you know he can give me more input and right so it's not just going to be me you know are you going to try and play some guitar on this next album um yeah i want to put at least one song of mine it's called um requiem and i i'm dedicating it to the kids of newtown so yeah i, I wrote that song and i think i'm going to put that on there okay any um overlying themes to this new album the next album? Yes. Um, it's going to be titled Run, and the I would say the themes about that album are either running towards or away from love, relationships. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much what it really is about. So you're almost all set with your second album, and you're, you're promoting your first album. Yeah, I have enough for like another two albums really? after this one. And you're so con- I just want to like, come on, because you know, like right. you change so much, so like I'm already writing more different stuff than I would for the next album so it's like, are you doing that purposely or is it just naturally oh it's just naturally I I just sit at home all day and <laughs> I just 
I wouldn't say I sit at home and write because uh, I'm not like putting myself like, oh, I'm writing now. Like, right. But I'm always coming up with new ideas and then songs spur off that. That's the benefits of, of working solo and not having to use those outer you know, influences and asking, like, what do you think I should do here? It just all comes from you, yeah. in which case, no matter where you are, you can then start writing. Yeah, I don't have to argue with anyone but myself. <laughs> and the fedoras. <laughs> this is very nice, yeah. <laughs> all right, want to go to song three? Sure, let's uh, go to uh, song three is Please Remind Me. Tell us about that. Okay, this song, um, this is probably one of the most personal songs on the uh, this album, um, and it is about um, the fact that I can't really remember my childhood um, because when I was growing up, my dad was... Uh, constantly cheating on my mom and it was all this drama and uh he eventually left us when i was around 12 and then i had a very messed up childhood after that and then so now i can't really remember my childhood too much because um i would say i guess the brain's natural defense against you block early, it out yeah you block it out and so that's what this song is about reminding please remind me what happened back then <laughs> if i even want to be reminded all right, the song is Please Remind Me, and he is JoJo Walsh. You are listening to yourlocalnote.com. Seems so fair From somewhere in the distance We saw the trouble coming A battle on the front lines We sent them packed and running away And that's when things changed The picture fades to black And all that remains Are scars and burns Sad lessons learned There's no use to looking back Cause deep inside I'm terrified of what I'll find In my mind That is Please Remind Me, and he is Joe Joe Walsh, and this is yourlocalnote.com. These songs, again, are coming off his first album, Travels. He's already working on his next album. 
and he also has some extra songs for the album after that. Yeah. <laughs> so very busy writing all these songs, and uh, you uh, you've played you've played quite a bit over the last year um, mm-hmm. around Philly, around the tri-state area. Um, what are some of the venues you've played at, and maybe tell us about your your favorite show or the first one that comes to mind from the past year? All right. Um, well, I started out doing open mics, sure. which is you know a great place for anyone to start out, and uh, um, I don't know. The first show I think I did was I was the featured act at this bar called Lickety Split on yeah. South Street, and uh, met a lot of great people. And then I, you know, found shows through them. So I did. I did a show at the Fire during the summer, mm-hmm. which was fun. And I was, uh, I think I was the headliner. I don't really. <laughs> I think I was. Yeah, I was. I was the headliner, and uh, that was a good time. And I played at Voltage Lounge, which is right next to the Electric Factory. Sure which was cool. And I've just done like showcases and yeah. you know stuff like that. So open mics fun. uh you know a lot of the people that we we interview you know talk about the open mics. Where are some uh, for people who are listening right now who are maybe trying to get into music? Where are some great places for open mics for people to, who aren't or are or, or just starting in the music industry? Uh I would say my favorite open mic in Philadelphia um is Lickety Split, which is right on South Street across from Jim Steaks, which is the best cheesesteak place in Philadelphia, by the way. <laughs> you right, can argue so if you want, but uh, <laughs> listen. Um, yeah, look at he split. It's hosted by Kelvin Coke Crane, some Brit. And uh, yeah, that one's pretty fun. Um, and then L- the Lola Bean, which is in Fishtown, but I think they just stopped doing their open mics, oh, which I'm very bad. sad because that was my first open mic in Philadelphia. Okay. Um, and then uh, where else are there? Gosh, because I kind of like, I've been like busy and in Jersey, so I haven't really been doing open mics anymore. Okay, so what you're doing a, a show in Trenton. Uh, why yes. don't we talk about that? Yeah, I play every Wednesday except for the first Wednesday at this place called the Trenton Social, mm-hmm. which is right across from the Sun Center in Trenton. Um, and it's a really nice bar. It's it's really like um, it's a classy little bar. You wouldn't think you're in Trenton when you're there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> place to get away. <laughs> yeah, seriously, seriously. It's really nice. And uh, I play there from 7 to 10, and it's free. And I basically play every single song I've ever written because it's three hours. And, <laughs> and try and uh, whip them all out. So. Do you uh, sometimes cover some songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I am so bad at memorizing my own lyrics, let alone someone else's. <laughs> ah, okay. But uh, I just um, I started covering... On piano, um, uh, Don't Think Twice, It's All Right by Bob Dylan. Okay. Which is fun because it's on piano, not guitar. Right. And then I cover Knocking on Heaven's Door by him oh, and cool. Adele, Someone Like You. Mm-hmm. And uh, Rihanna, We Found Love in a Hopeless Place. Okay. That's called. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah where, where can uh, people find your music? Um, my website is jojowalsh.com, J O J O. Um, and then I have a Reverb Nation. You can find me JoJo Walsh on that, and Facebook JoJo Walsh. <laughs> it's all JoJo Walsh. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. And uh, I I just um, I just got all my ASCAP stuff figured mm-hmm. out. So I'm I'm about to put this CD on iTunes and all that good stuff. But it's taken me a little while, financial reasons, I guess. Sure. You know? yeah. It's it's not it's not easy. It's pretty. Complicated. It really is, especially when you're doing it by yourself. Like I don't yeah. have a manager or anything right, right now. Right. So I get. I get very. Um, I think they make I push it, myself back. I, I they, set myself back. They they make it complicated on purpose. I think. Yes, I'm. <laughs> sh- yeah, I mean, there's billions of people out there. I'm sure. Okay, but pretty uh, soon you'll be on iTunes. You'll let yes. us know. Let us know so we yeah, can put totally, it up on the yeah. site. Yeah, definitely. Will. We want to promote that. Okay. Um, I guess we're gonna wrap the things up. Sure, let's do it. Um, we're gonna end with the Great Divide. So, what can you tell us about that song? Um, when I f- wrote this album or finished writing the first. Uh, I guess eight songs I moved to Las Vegas right after I graduated from Westminster Choir College and so that was the Great Divide New Jersey did it Las Vegas (laughs) and uh, it was uh, when I was living there I felt like I had lost a big chunk of my personality um, and lost the sense of just who I am I guess why would you say that because Vegas is a I gained it oh it had nothing to do with Vegas it just had to deal with you know I I had so many expectations that you know what I expected was going to happen when I got there I wanted to perform the few songs that I had written at the time which weren't that many Mm -hmm. and I didn't perform at all I didn't even do like a karaoke night or anything so (laughs) I was just so frustrated with myself okay because you know I wanted to do this and I, I, I just it just wasn't happening 
So I had felt that I had lost, um, I don't know if it was the drive. I don't think I lost the passion. Uh, it was just sort of um, self-doubt. I think the song is about, you know, self-doubt. So it's the Great Divide, traveling to Las Vegas. So, uh, so you went. What made you want to go to Las Vegas? What was the the I reason? I wanted to there? get out of the East Coast. I, I had been doing school for seventeen years. But why not Los Angeles? Because oh, my sister, my sister Rachel, she lives in Las Vegas okay. with her boyfriend. Okay. And uh, I was always, you know, crying to her. Like, I want to get out of here so bad. Right, and right, she's right. like, just come out here. Oh, so I didn't. I thought I would have been there a lot longer than three months, but I was only there <laughs> for three months. Well, maybe yeah. you should have gave it more time. Three months is not a lot. A lot I know. Of time. Anywhere I've ever moved, I moved to Las Vegas for three months, thought I'd be the longer, and I came back and then moved to California for three months and thought I'd be the longer and came back and then Philly for three months and I couldn't even live on my own there. Three so. months is a long time in Vegas. I can't be there more than three days. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it gets kind of tiring. It was a good time, though. Yeah. So so it's all you. So you're you're just a Jersey boy at heart. That's what I it am is. a Jersey boy. Okay. Yes, very nice. All right, always will be. All right, so uh, the Great Divide. We'll get to that. Uh, but uh, want to thank you for joining us. Thank you very Thanks much for, for having me. I really appreciate okay. it. And uh, you'll let us know what you're going to be uh, doing as far as other shows uh, that you book after uh, the Trenton show. And then uh, you also keep us up to date when you're going to be on iTunes, so we can get that up on our site, too. Yes, I will. Sounds great. Excellent. Thank All right, Jojo. Jo, thank you so much. Uh, this is uh, another uh, podcast here on yourlocalnote.com. As always, we'll have a, a brand new podcast coming up on Monday. And if you want to get in touch with us, all you have to do is uh, email us at contact at yourlocalnote.com. Let us know what you think of this podcast and the site in general or other podcasts. Or if you just have a question, you can just ask us and uh, we'll try to to uh, answer to the best of our abilities. <laughs> All right, again, a new uh, uh, podcast next week. Uh, the final song here is The Great Divide. It's by Jojo Walsh from his new album called Travels. This is yourlocalnote.com. I packed my things and flew across The Great Divide The time that I have lost It's made me lose my pride I'm trying, I'm trying to get back home Cause I'm tired, I'm tired of being alone All of these ways I felt I had no control Always felt like I Just because I seem good Don't mean I'm completely fine So would you get along the